Have you always wanted to own your own business by becoming a licensed cosmetologist? If so, now is the time to enroll at Unlimited Cosmetology School, LLC, located at 102 Broad Street in Hattiesburg. That's right, learn how to become a professional cosmetologist by acquiring 1,500 clock hours in 12 or 16 months. Now is the time for open enrollment. If you're interested, contact Lisa Daniels by calling 601-336-7256 or 601-408-2650. my friends, my viewers, my partners. I'm just so glad you're joining us. It is such a blessing. I get excited when I get in front of this camera because I know that God has a word for you. I've been praying and I've been seeking God. I've been ministering in different places and I've been asking the Lord, God, what is it that you have for the people? So I have a word for you today and I hope that you're going to be blessed by this word. If you know of anyone who knows that they need a blessing and they need some deliverance, they need some healing, They need to find out what their purpose is. They need to understand what process is. They need to understand what destiny is. Call them. Tell them to tune in to Hannah Hopkins today on Lifting You Higher TV Ministries. Uh, Before I get started, I want to say a word of prayer. Lord God, we come before you right now to thank you for this opportunity. It's because of you that we're able to stand before your people and talk about your word, God. Tell them that you are God. You are Savior. You are Lord. You are maker. You are creator. You are everything. And we thank you for letting us be able to impart this information today, Lord. We pray that as we speak to your people, that they will be blessed. They will be saved. They will be healed. They will be delivered. They will be set free, followed by signs and wonders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before I get started with the message today, which the title is, it's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. I know most of you have have read the story about Ruth, and I'm going to read some scriptures from that. I'm not going to read all of the scriptures. I'm going to be skipping around and I'll talk about some of it and I'll read some of it before we get started. In the days when the judges ruled, there was a famine in the land. So a man from Bethlehem in Judea, together with his wife and two sons, went to live for a while in the country of Moab. The man's name was Elimelech. His wife's name was Naomi. And the names of the two sons were Malon and Kellen. They were Ephorites from Bethlehem, Judea, and they went to Moab and lived there. Now Naomi's husband died, and she was left with her two sons. They married Moabite women. One was named Oprah and the other Ruth. And after they had lived there for 10 years, both Melon and Killam also died, and Naomi was left without her two sons and her husband. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mothers. May the Lord show you kindness, and you have known that the, the kindness that you have known and you have shown to other people, to your husbands. Then she kissed both of them goodbye. They wept and said to her, We are going back with you. We are going with your people. But Naomi said, Mm-mm, Return, my daughters. Why would you go with me? I'm going to have, I'm not going to have any more sons. And even if I did, they would be, be too young for you. If the, by the time they got old enough to get married, you would be too old for them. So go back to your mothers. Go back to Moab. And so I'm talking about it now instead of reading it. So Ruth decided she was going to go with Naomi. Oprah went back to her hometown in Moab. So they wept again. And then this is what Ruth said. Don't urge me to leave you or to turn back from you. Where you go, I'll go. And where you stay, I'll stay. Your people will be my people and your God will be my God. I want to say that one more time. Your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. I want you to say this, wherever you are right now, your God will be 
my God. You see, when she made this statement, that changed her life, the very fabric of her life forever. That's when the blessings began to be released to come into Ruth's life. Naomi was bitter. She thought, it's over for me. I left full, I'm going back empty. I don't have anything. My husband is gone. My two sons are gone. So I'm just going back over there to Bethlehem just to, just to try to make it until I die. I'm not going to try to live because I don't have any money and my family is gone, so I'm just going to exist. Do you ever feel like you're just existing? Like things have been going wrong for so long. You, you get a hit here, you get a knock here, you get a hit here, and you say, you know what? I'm just going to exist because life is not what it used to be. But little did they know, Ruth and Naomi know, that things were just about to change for them. It was not what it looked like. So I want to say to you today, some of you that's watching the program, You've, you've been hit hard. You've had problems here. You have problems there. You've lost this. You've lost that. And you're saying, this is just my lot. I'm just going to live like this. This is the way it is. But I want to remind you of one thing. It's not what it looks like. It's not what it looks like. It's going to be better. And you know what? When you lose something and it's restored back to you, it's better than it was before. And so that's the very thing that happened to them. So let's go on with the story. And so <clears throat> Ruth, Ruth said, you know what? My mother-in-law doesn't have a husband and our husbands are gone. So I'm going to take on the responsibility of taking care of my mother-in-law. She made that sacrifice. It's good to make sacrifices for other people because while you're making something happen to make somebody else happy or complete, God is working on your behalf. You're so busy trying to help somebody else until God says, I see you. I know what you're doing. So you know what? I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to open some doors for you. I'm going to make some ways for you because you are giving up what you have to help somebody else. Life can make us feel like we're going in circles. Sometimes it gets hard. But Psalms, I think it's 30 and 5 tells us that we've been made endure for just a night. But if you can hold out until tomorrow, joy is coming in the morning. Some of you are just like Naomi. You think, I'll never be happy again. Some of you are like Ruth. I'm, I might not be where I want to be, but I'm going to help somebody else get where they are trying to go. And so when you do that, you are going to see the hands of the Lord begin to move on your behalf. You see, God knows how to turn the tide. He knows how to change things. He knows how to turn things around. For everything we go through, there is a purpose. Now, I don't know what it is, but wherever you are right now, there's a purpose for you being where you are right now. Um, <clears throat> so Ruth, Ruth's marrying Naomi's son, Chilion, who believed in God, happened for a purpose. She was a Moabite. She didn't believe in the true and living God. But when she got to know Naomi and her husband, she saw something in them that she liked. So she goes through the process of losing her husband, being sad, before she walked into her destiny. Sometimes sadness ushers in blessings. Sometimes misfortunes usher in blessings because it was not what it looked like. Lil did Ruth know that a good life was just be about to begin. She was about to go marry the wealthiest man in that land. Some of us want a Boaz, but we don't want to glean. Ruth went out in the field and she gleaned. Somebody was watching her and they told Boaz about her and how she was taking care of the mother-in-law who was kin to Naomi's husband. They were all in the family together. And that impressed him. When you help somebody else, when you do for other people, somebody is watching you and they are telling other people about you. Your goodwill will pay off. 
So when she made that statement, your God is going to be my God, she said, I'm not going to serve an idol God no more. I'm going to try to true and live in God. This major decision that she made, as we said earlier, ushered in her future, her destiny. Let me tell you something that I thought was interesting. Ruth married a Christian man and she became the great grandmother of David. David slew Goliath and guess who Goliath's mother was? Oprah. Oprah went back to be a Moabite to the Moabite to Moab and she was a mother of Goliath and Goliath was slain or was slain by David. You see what, when a Christian person gets in line and do what they are supposed to do, how they are come out on the win and end every time. Destiny was calling Ruth to greatness. She would not have gotten to know the true and living God if she had not gone back home with Naomi. If she had not gone back home with Naomi, she wouldn't have gleaned in the field. If she hadn't gleaned in the field, she wouldn't have met Boaz. If she hadn't met Boaz, Obed would not have been born. If Obed had not have been born, Jesse would not have been born. If Jesse had not been born, then David would not have been born. But the prophecy had to come to pass because it was said that Jesus was going to come down through David's bloodline. And the word says he's the son of David, the seed of Abraham. So all of this was a process leading to the destiny. So when you're going through things, you got to understand there are steps that you have to take. There are things that happen in between you walking into that, that God has for you. David was a man made after God's own heart. And Ruth was his great grandmother. Now, see, you can't look at a person at what they are doing now and say what they are going to be tomorrow because Ruth was a Moabite. She becomes saved. She births David into the world. Jesus come down through David's bloodline. So don't look at the prostitute out there. Don't look at the woman out there on the street. Don't look at the alcoholic. Don't look at the drug addict and say what they'll never be because God can take it. He can turn them around. He can make them into being what he wants them to be because it's not always what it looks like. When we are going through things, God is shaping us. He's molding us. He's pruning us. He's preparing us for something great. A cake is not good when you look at the raw ingredients, the eggs, the butter, the flour, the flavor, and it's all raw. You can't eat it. But when you put that cake in the stove, and you start smelling it cooking, you smell that good aroma, and it comes out, it's something good. Something good is gonna happen to you. Stay tuned, I'll be right back. If you are being blessed by this program, we need your financial support at this time. Please consider becoming a partner or making a donation to this ministry. Donations can be made using PayPal at Hannah Hopkins Ministries or by mailing your donation to P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi 39404. We appreciate your financial support. Please pray about being a part of spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ during this crucial time by making your donation today. If you have a prayer request, please call us at 1-800-305-1928. If you don't get an answer, please leave your name and number and someone will call you back. Today we're talking about it's not what it looks like. Have you ever seen somebody and, 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 and they looked a certain way and you see them the next time and they look so different and you say, they don't look like the same person. They could look better. They could look worse. You know, I, I don't know, but I, I won't go there. But anyway, <laughs> I want you to know that you are important to God. God loves you. God loved Naomi. He loved Ruth. He loved Oprah, but Oprah decided she wanted to go back to be a Moabite. You see, when you feel like you're all alone, you feel like this is it. 
A good thing to do is to thank God for what you have left. I was thinking today about some things that I need God to do for me. And God reminded me, he said, look where I brought you from, from this time last year. This time last year, my friends, I was in Atlanta with my children having a, a arthritis problem with my back, a back compression, uh, spaces in between my vertebrae, uh, problems with my spine. I go up there to get some help and I get in the bathtub. They put a chair in there, a shower chair to help me out. I'm getting out of the bathtub and I crack my femur bone. I go to the hospital. I have surgery. This time last year, I was in Wellstar Hospital, couldn't walk, couldn't turn over, couldn't go up from one end of the bed, scoot up on the pillow, totally dependent on other people. When I go to my doctor's appointment, they're pushing me in a wheelchair, people. I get off the wheelchair, I get in a walker. I get off the walker, I get on the cane. I get off the cane, I kept speaking, this is not my portion. God is bigger than this. I'm a faith walker, I'm a faith talker. God has brought me through some other things. There is nothing too hard for God. I stood on scriptures. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. But he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes I'm healed. I kept quoting the word. I kept speaking the word. I kept confessing the word. I kept believing the word. I kept singing. I kept praying, and I kept praising. I told my daughter, I said, it's time for me to go home. She said, Mom, you're not ready. I said, I'm going home home. I'm going to Hattiesburg, Mississippi, and I'm going to drive my car. She said, oh no. I said, okay, baby, just help me get home. I came home. Two days after I got home, I started driving my car. I started physical therapy. And I stand before you today to say that it was not what it looked like. Because it looked like it was over for me. My mobility was over. When my husband transitioned, it looked like my joy was gone. But if you stand, you believe, you confess, and you get around other believers, watch who you're dealing with when you're going through these kind of things. You don't want to deal with someone who said, I know somebody else who went through that and they never did. They didn't. I don't want to hear that. I wanted to hear what the word said. You see, what I was going through was a fact. It was a fact that I, di I didn't have my mobility. But the truth was, I was healed 2,000 years ago. The truth was, Jesus took the stripes for this arthritis that the enemy brought upon me. The truth is, it's not over until God says it's over. The truth is, that it was not what it looked like. I feel the comforter. I feel the comforter. I feel like some of you need to hear this because it's, it's not looking good. It looks bleak. Some of you have children that are sick. You have children who are on drugs. You have spouses that are sick. Some of you can't pay your bills. Some of you have relational problems on your job. Some of you don't know how you're going to make it from one day to the other. Some of you are dealing with mass depression and oppression. It doesn't belong to you. It's not your lot if you are a child of God. Naomi and Ruth realized that being hungry, being poor was not their lot. But let me tell you what they did. They came up with a plan and they followed that plan. Ruth followed the information that was given to her 
by her mother-in-law, Naomi, and it worked. And that, that's why I need to go to this part and go and give you this, and then I'll come back to the other. I want you to write this down. If you have some paper, I want you to write down what I'm about to give you because this is going to really bless you if I can find it and if I put it in my notes. I think I did. I think I will. I think I did. I think I will. So <laughs> I want you to listen to what I have to say. And what I have to say is this, that God favors me. The favor of God is on my life. That's number one. The favor of God is on my life. Number two, God is going to give me a plan. God is going to give me a plan as I seek him. And number three, I'm going to follow that plan. Number four, I'm not going to get in head of God. If you do those four things, I didn't find them, but I remember them. You are going to see God working in a miraculous way. And it's not going to take him long. When, whenever I have a major decision to make, I said, God, give me a plan. Tell me what to do. God did something for, for me, Sonny, that blew my mind. And I had just prayed about it. I was about to get depressed and oppressed about it. And within 30 minutes, God solved that thing for me because I asked him to give me a plan. Look to the hills from which cometh your help. Stop looking to people. Stop looking to your friends for answers. Stop looking to even people in the church. They love you. But they don't always have the answers. Stop looking to your job for your monies to come in. God, can, don't stop working now. Don't stop working. But know that God can multiply what you're making. And also, he can give you money in unexpected ways. And so that's why you got to stay open to the plan. I mean, that just been sticking in my mind. Follow the plan. Follow the plan. David followed the plan. David said, God, should we go? Should I pursue or should I not pursue? When he got back to Ziglag, his children were gone. His wives were gone. The houses had been burned. His friends turned their back on him. See, when you down, people want to turn their back on you. When you up, everybody's flocking to you. They said, David, you're the cause of this happening. and We're going to stone you. They just they, they got mad with him. David went to God, got a plan to go after the people that had done that to him. And guess what? God told David, pursue. David pursued and he recovered everything. Every, he recovered it all. When God gives you a plan, it's a good plan. Abraham kind of veered away from the plan, trying to do it his, his way. Thought, you know, Sarah needed a little help because she was so, so old. But if God said you're going to have a baby at 99, then you're going to have that baby at 99. And that's exactly what happened. Even though they veered off, God still kept his promise. He's a promise keeping God. I wish I could finish this message because I got a lot of more meat I want to share with you. But I want to share you with this with you. Just be because your prayers have not been answered does not mean that God is not going to answer your prayers. With a delay uh, is not saying that it's not coming through. It's just not coming at the time you want it. See, sometimes I want things and it's not time for me to have them. Sometimes I have to just wait on God because when I wait on God, he, he knows what's best for me. Sometimes I'm wanting things that's not even good for me. And if I got them, I might forget about God. I don't want to get anything that make me forget about God. Stop worshiping God. Stop putting God first in everything that I do. I don't care what I get. I want God to be first in my life. You got to remember that stuff will not make you happy. People will not make you happy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. And when you serve God, put God first in your life, you setting yourself up for a breakthrough. 
Ruth set herself up when she said, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. Where you are buried, I'm going to be buried. I'm in this thing all the way. I'm not, I don't have just one foot in. I'm in it from the beginning to the end. When you say you're going to serve God, you're going to have to serve him from the beginning to the end. I wish I could tell you some of the things that God is doing for, the, for people in these last days. Revival is breaking out. It's breaking out everywhere. You turn the news on, you hear the bad thing. But if you read the word, you read the good things. If you talk to people who are serving God and seeking God, you're going to find out some miracles are happening. I ministered the other day. People were healed. People were healed from headaches, healed from leg problems because the gifts were in operation. God want to put the gifts in operation. He want you to be a part of this end time revival that's going on. Are you ready to step into the water? Are you ready to get out the riverbank? Are you ready to go all the way? Are you ready to say, for God I live and for God I die? Are you ready to say it's not over until God says it's over? Are you ready to say it's not what it looks like? Are you ready to say that God will never fail me? He'll never leave me. He'll never forsake me, but he's going to be with me. I don't care what I'm going through. God is going through with me. If I'm up on top of the mountain, he's up there with me. If I'm in the valley, he's down there with me. If I'm in trouble, he's there with me. God is with you everywhere you go. You got to realize Regardless to what is happening, how your children are acting, how you feel in your body, how broke you are, how, how lonely you are, how sad you are, it's not over yet. God is there. He'll be there all the time. I wished I could sing. I would sing that song, all my life he's been faithful. All my life he's been so good. Every breath that I'm breathing, I want to sing of the praises of the Lord. If you need prayer, I'm going to give you a different number today. Call 601-549-1891. And I'm going to put my address on the screen because y'all need to send me some money. I need some money, honey. I'm going to look to hear from you, but on a serious note, I want you to write me if you have a prayer request. I love praying for people. I've been called to pray. I've been summoned to pray. I've been anointed to pray. And when I pray, things happen. Not because of me, but because of him. I love you and God loves you. And don't you ever forget about that. When the devil come knocking on your door talking about nobody loves you, nobody cares about you. Say, devil, you are lying to everybody that agree with you. Because Jesus loved me, this I know. I got to go. Until next time, I'm Hannah Hopkins with Lifting You High, your TV ministry saying, you be blessed. For a donation of $10 or more, we would like to send you a copy of our signature keychain. For a donation of $20 or more, a copy of our book, Speeches for Any Occasion. We accept PayPal and Cash App. Or send check or money order to Hannah Hopkins Ministries, P.O. Box 17405, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, 39404.